My name is Kevin Reggick, and I welcome you once again to Conversations from the Hot Box. Uh, today, we're going to discuss from the subject matter, exposing the issue of religion and the church. Um, many of the plagues we see in the Bible expose as well as cause death and destruction. In Genesis 12, God strikes Pharaoh with great plagues, which exposed the truth about Abram's wife was not his sister. In Exodus uh, chapter 7 through 12, they exposed the God of Moses was sovereign over the God of Egypt, including Pharaoh, who was considered a God by the Egyptians. The plague of the book of Exodus upon Egypt exposed the weaknesses of the gods of Pharaoh and the power of the God of Moses and his people. These are two examples of pandemics exposing a condition God wanted revealed. The COVID-19 pandemic we experienced here in America uh, did the same thing. One of the things it exposed was how uh, deeply and dangerously the word of God, uh, uh, and rather the word of God, the kingdom of God, the church, and the purposes of Jesus Christ had been misrepresented, abused, and weaponized even to take advantage of the masses and the measure of faith within us all. Now, I must at the same breath Thank God for the many dedicated and faithful men and women of God who are led by the Holy Spirit and function in integrity, high, get, high character, true uh, devotion, and honor to God and his word. Now, this is not a, a uh, shine a negative light moment on the church. It is to highlight the need to be vigilant, discerning, prayerful, fearful, and sensitive to the Spirit of God. Many presenters of the gospel have displayed it as the good news of the establishment of church buildings for religious activity, serving and representing God any way you want to, and cherry-picking what believers are to adhere to and uh, uh, concern themselves with. In teaching his disciples to pray, Jesus instructed them to pray for the manifestation of the kingdom. In Luke 11, chapter, uh, uh, excuse me, in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, it states, And he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, uh, held holy and revered on earth as it is in heaven. The petitions of the first part, your kingdom come, your will be done, are inseparable, uh, as each includes the one which follows. As the hallowing of God's name requires the coming of his kingdom, so the kingdom comes through the doing of his will. Again, the first part calls for the second, for it is his will uh, that is to be done by us. Therefore, we must sustain uh, uh, the substance and the ability to forgive, the asking for forgiveness and deliverance from evil. Jesus' biggest and most challenging group of people were those of a religious mindset. Now, allow me to share a short story with you to, to make my point here. There was a young man who was unemployed and uh, he had tried every place but couldn't find any employment anywhere. So he swallowed his pride and put his college degrees to the side and went to the local zoo asking for some employment. The zoo superintendent there said that he didn't have any positions open, but if the young man was willing to help him out, he would pay him. It seemed that the gorilla uh, that they were displaying had succumbed to sickness and passed away. And so the supervisor wanted him to pretend to be a gorilla. Well, the young man accepted the job offer and went to work. And after a few weeks, he got comfortable in the position. And to be honest, he got very good at it. One day, some young ladies came uh, with a group of other visitors and 
the uh, young man wanted to show off, as young men do, among other females. <laughs> and so he began swinging very high in, in his particular cage. Well, he was swinging so high and so hard that when he swung one time and his, his vine broke and he flew all the way into the lion's cage. Now he's confronted with the lion. He's backing up, his back is up against the wall, the lion is approaching him. And finally the lion reaches him and he stands on his two hind uh, uh, legs and he raises his paw and the young man started screaming, oh, help, help, Jesus, help. The lion leans in and he says, be quiet before you get us both fired. <laughs> you see, the moral of the story, of the point of the story, is that uh, here we find two characters acting to be something they were not. And therefore, the visitors were really being deceived because they paid their money. They came there in expectation uh, to see and experience a gorilla and a lion, but they were deceived by the hypocrites. And that's what a uh, hypocrite really means, actors. Uh, and so they was playing a part. They was practicing. They were acting to be something that they were not. They did not have the nature of a gorilla or a lion. Uh, and therefore they did not display that nature correctly. And that was deception. It's the same thing today. Uh, from storefront churches to mega churches, people are going to church to experience God and his kingdom. And, and, and really, they're going there seeking a manifestation of his kingdom. But yet when they get there, they receive entertainment and religious rituals in place of the real thing, which is the manifestation of the kingdom of God. The people are being deceived by hypocrites, playing kingdom, but practicing religion. As they come to this realization, they stop coming. They stop seeking. And this gives birth to having our own form of godliness with no power. In school, I studied what's known as systematic theology. It is a discipline that seeks to understand God as revealed in the scriptures. Its purpose is to attempt to create a uh, statement of faith addressing the major doctrines of the Bible. In our studies, the kingdom of God was not given much consideration. To fully understand it, we must consider anthropology which is the study of human beings. It seeks to address the question of what makes us human, the relationship between God and how we function as human beings has been referred to as religion. Now, there are many diverse definitions of religion. Webster defines it as a personal set or institutionalized system of religious attitudes, beliefs, and practices. It is the belief in something higher than the individual human being. And it can include uh, a worldview of God that is laced with human emotion, intelligence, and will. Every religious perspective has a set of guiding principles that they espouse, which is their worldview. The goal of kingdom theology is the evaluating of God through his identity, his ability and nature. It examines the sovereign rule of God exercised and displayed in creation. And according to Jesus and John the Baptist, the purpose and instructions of Jesus was to usher in the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Now allow me to, to share a few scriptures here to point this out. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10 states, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 it states, in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. It states, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. In Matthew chapter 4, 17, it states, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, uh, there's one more I want us to unpack just a little, okay? And that's coming out of uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 18. And it says, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, the key to this statement is the relationship between the name Peter and the word rock. The word for Peter, it's Petros. It's a masculine noun, and it means a small stone or pebble. On the other hand, when Jesus talked about this rock, the Greek term he used was Petra. Petra is a feminine noun, which means a massive cliff rock. Now, it is Jesus who is the massive uh, cliff, cliff rock, so to speak, or rather the revelation of Jesus and who he is upon which the church would be built. So in essence of the source from which the church was to be built upon and on, it's important to understand this. See, the source is Petra, the feminine noun. It refers to having qualities or an appearance traditionally associated with a woman or girls. It, as a noun, it refers to the female sex or gender. Now, because of this source, the church can rightly be referred to in the feminine context as a bride, i.e. the bride of Christ. Now, it would not be built upon Peter, but upon what led to Peter's confession, which was revelation and illumination of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. He stated, you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the living one. Peter was not the rock, but the small stone, which was part of the rock. The rock itself, again, was revelation and confession. Therefore, the church, the bride, was going to be built on the revelation and confession of the Messiahship of Jesus and his kingdom. The revelation of Jesus is that he is king. Now, in order to be a king, you must have followers and a kingdom. The king and his kingdom is the foundation of the church. Now, two key points are found uh, in this text as well. First, Every major decision a senior leader makes regarding the operation of the church, it can include information gathered from the learned and the wise or the experienced uh, members and leaders of the church, but it must include counsel from God and his word. Why? Because it's his church. Second, his church was to be built upon a foundation uh, uh, not to present it as a, uh, a foundation itself. See, because currently the church is uh, mainly identified as a physical structure and not the believers. The foundation has been presented in error. With this understanding, the following verse gives greater illumination. In Matthew, uh, I believe, uh, 16 and 19, it says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Only a king can provide keys to his kingdom. And as citizens, we need keys to access the benefits of the kingdom. These keys are provided to us through our relationship and our citizenship. A relationship that is manifested, developed, and nourished through our lifestyles and conduct as kingdom citizens. We become citizens of God's kingdom by way of religion. Now, religion is what man is to use to discover the kingdom. It serves as a means to the answer, but it is not the answer. 
it's very similar to the 12 steps programs of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, how they function uh, uh, to lead people to a relationship with God, or as they put it, a higher power. The steps do not provide uh, the recovery itself, but they are the means by which to get to the source of their recovery. It is getting to the source, which is God, uh, submitting to him and developing and maintaining a relationship with him that is of most importance. All religions uh, promise uh, power to control life and circumstances. They are claimed superior over each other. They all compare and compete with each other. They all function as an isolated culture that excludes other segments of humanity. All religion seems to glory in a spirit of segregation and separatism. Rather than uniting uh, humanity and humanly, excuse me, with common power and knowledge of purpose, religion has proven itself instead to be the great divider of mankind. Now, that's a quote from the late Dr. Miles Monroe. Religion prepares us to leave Earth, function on future peace, joy, and abundance. The kingdom impacts and empowers us to dominate and focus on peace, joy, and abundance now on Earth. Within a kingdom, the king is responsible for the well-being of his citizens. Now, there are four essentials uh, any community or group of people must have to ensure their independence and well-being. The four, uh, uh, and of course, there are more, but these are uh, considered the four major ones. And the four are a banking system, supermarket, medical center, and a school. Now, why is it that within our communities that, that, that have several mega churches, uh, uh, certainly like here in Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm at, uh, we have a few mega churches here. Why is it uh, uh, that we can develop these mega churches but can't unite together to establish a public school, a medical center, a supermarket, or a banking system? the school to educate, the medical center to heal and promote sound health, a, a supermarket to feed and provide high, good quality foods, affordable foods, and a bank to finance the community and provide an economic force in the community. For example, according to smartmoney.com, uh, the three-year uh, failure rate for new banks is less than one in 1,000, which compared to a 60% failure rate for new restaurants. <laughs> it's not too bad, right? The profits are not too shabby either. Generally, banks need about 15 or $25 million in capital to get started. Many community banks are able to raise that money locally. For example, there was a bank in New Jersey called Harmony Bank that was able to open with 90% of the capital coming from the community. The board of directors was made up of business leaders from within the community, including a 40-year-old law firm, a construction company, and an accounting firm. The decision to do this was not religious. It was based on a, uh, uh, it was based on fulfilling a need empowering the community and prospering. Now, of course, they were soon brought out by a larger bank. But this is kingdom thinking. The church can't take over anything on earth without the ability to discern needs, the desire to fulfill those needs, and the willingness to empower and share the wealth. In a kingdom, this is referred to as common wealth which is a political community founded for the common good. To some, this sounds outlandish because we've been conditioned to think religiously and not kingdom. Let me provide another example, kingdom versus religious mindsets. 
In Luke chapter 12, verses 29 to 31, it states, And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind, for all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you need these things, but seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Now let's focus on this last part here for a minute. Thinking religiously, the last part of this statement means that if I just pray and, and seek God, all of my needs will just be given, added to me. But I believe it's a little deeper than that. The word seek in this text is not implying to supply or, or excuse me, it's not implying simply to look for it stems from a Greek word meaning to attempt to attain some state or condition or to try to be, to attempt to energize, to attain a state or condition. It is to seek strongly, to, to try to, to try hard to be. It refers to the state or condition we are trying hard to attain to as kingdom citizens. <laughs> now, according to the Greek English lexicon of the New Testament, the Greek word translated agate here refers to placing something at the disposal of someone else. It refers to, uh, to, to give, to provide, to grant, making something available to someone without necessarily involving actual change of ownership to make available, to provide, to prevent too. I like that definition in terms of our discussion about kingdom uh, that refers to uh, some making something available to someone without necessarily involving actual change of ownership because that's what a king does for his kingdom citizens because the king owns everything but he makes available to his citizens for their use but the ownership never changes <laughs> it infers that, that, that these are not the main things but in addition to the main thing. You see, the main thing is citizenship. Why is this important? Because a king is responsible for the well-being of the citizens of his kingdom. And, and understanding that he will provide what it is you need, but there are also certain conditions we need to meet as citizens as well. Now, this doesn't mean that we can just lay in the bed all day and do nothing because God will provide. <clears throat> can I go a little deeper? The Bible, the constitution of the kingdom of God, tells us God granted us gifts. Those gifts, according to scripture, makes room, open doors for us. The gifts grant us the ability to obtain the things we need. That is what is given to us. See, another note here is that we are seeking through the world and religion uh, 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 incorrectly. And even in addition to that, what we are seeking in the world and in religion is found in the kingdom of God. Luke 12 and, and 32 states, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. See, many Christians made jokes about members of the nation of Islam uh, selling bean pies and fruit and newspaper on the streets, on street corners, etc. But this organization, which I was a part of as a young child and teenager, this organization of small groups wasn't mega necessarily, was able to come together and establish schools, restaurants, grocery stores, a bank, farms, community policing, and an international fish import trade with Peru, all in the pursuit of establishing a thriving independent community. Where is the church-owned 
Holy Spirit Bank of America, or it's Trinity Farms, or it's Redemption Supermarket, or it's Pentecost Restaurant. Now, I know, me, I know some of you didn't like that, but it's true. The truth is, we can be a, a, the truth can be a little sour or have a little sting to it, but that should not stop the presentation of it. God has called us to be orators of truth. And the task of the church is to make the invisible kingdom visible through faithful Christian living and according to the principles of the kingdom. The gospel of Christ is still the gospel of the kingdom. The church must make its message credible by manifesting the reality of kingdom life. Again, the late Dr. Miles Monroe made these distinctions that are worth noting here. He stated, religion preoccupies man until he finds the kingdom. Religion is what man does until he finds the kingdom. Religion prepares man to leave earth. The kingdom empowers man to dominate earth. Religion focuses on heaven. The kingdom focuses on earth. Religion is reaching up to God. The kingdom is God coming down to man. Religion wants to escape earth. The kingdom impacts, influences, and changes earth. Religion seeks to take earth to heaven. The kingdom seeks to bring heaven to earth. Jesus teaches us that the kingdom has long been a long anticipated event. However, it is manifested in the now. According to Matthew 11 and 12, uh, Matthew 12, 28, Luke 17, 20 and 21. The kingdom is already present in the lives of men and women. And Jesus uh, discouraged the religious leaders from looking to a future kingdom that would come with an outward display of glory. The parables of the kingdom found in our scripture make it clear that in some sense, the kingdom is present and at work in earth right now. Well, what say you? What say you? Please uh, 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 feel free to uh, uh, share your comments, your thoughts, your considerations. And, and click on the button on the left to subscribe to my channel for more dialogues such as this and content such as this. And thank you for your time and attention. And as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.